How are you, everybody? Good day, good day, good day. Welcome to another road reflection. Coming on this drive with me. As you do every Saturday. It is Storytelling Saturday. Uh, Very excited today, too, is today's the Zoom test show. Uh, there's a one or two spots left on that. And, uh, yeah, the Zoom test show is at 8.30. And at 7.30, I will send all the information. It's like the doors are opening around 7.30. Uh, and I will send out all the information, uh, about how to log into the Zoom thing. Um, and this is just a test show, so this one is free. Because I want to I wanna just kind of get the feel for it a little bit. Um, and not just that, but also, uh, you know, get the, get the kinks out. Cause I have a way that I'm, I'm planning on, uh, on doing some of the more, more dynamic little commentary and stuff. So it'll be like stand up comment, news commentary, headline news type stuff. So I kind of want to kink out some of these uh, non-stand-up related um, segments, so to speak. Uh, so got going on, got that going on today. So I'm I'm basically going to spend a majority of the day kind of tweaking that sort of stuff up, and um, you know, making sure that I'm on top of that because that is that is something new uh, that I have to kind of manage. So I want to be able to dedicate some a good bit about a good bit of my energy to to that today. Um, so uh, looking forward to that though. I'm excited about that. Uh, should be fun. Should be nice. Uh, I got a few people. I know a couple of the people. Uh, a few of the people are going to be new, which I'm interested to see how they'll react to it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I've, I've, it's been kind of a good day so far. Uh, I ended up talking to my mom about uh, just, like, religious stuff. Not in, like, an adversarial way, but I like the stories. The stories are... I've, I've always enjoyed, like, the religious stories and such. Um, you know, so I've I've always enjoyed the stories and she likes it so we ended up talking about a couple of uh, a couple stories and some some stories I hadn't heard before and uh, you know like it's funny because we have our own um, story of the flood that, that my mom and I were talking about uh, that like the Judeo-Christian religions also believe but we also have one so in my head that just it kind of correlates to, like, I wonder if there was some kind of, like, real crazy storm and flood that happened on, like, a massive global scale, right? And, at, like, you know, humanity as a, as, as a whole kind of experienced this. Um, and they came up with their own stories about it to kind of justify what happened and how they survived. It could also be that you know, from the ice age when the planet was frozen over and you had these giant land masses made out of ice, you know, when the planet started heating back up, uh, you had, you had a lot of floods that, uh, <laughs> that kind of happened. Uh, so that could be, that could be a thing. I don't know. It was kind of, it was kind of nice, nice to kind of do that. Nice to kind of have that conversation, you know, so, um, but, uh, yeah, so the morning has been pretty good. I'm mostly, um, I'm also, I'm also like, um, sorry if I'm, I'm starting this out a little spacier than I normally would. Uh, I'm planning out the route and the story in my head at the same time. Uh, and thinking about the show that I'm going to do later. And I got to like try to concentrate, uh, back on this thing, but back, back into the moment that, that I'm in rather than thinking about the moments to come, I suppose, would be the way to, to articulate that, but, um, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I've also gotten into, like, <laughs> I found a couple of Dragon Ball fucking fan fiction 
uh, things on YouTube, like animated fan fictions. Like they're pretty good. Like they're they the the animation style is really good. Uh, obviously, it's not like the same quality as if you were watching it on, uh, you know, Cartoon Network. Like it's not made by Funimation or anything, but it's still like pretty damn good. You know, uh, for a small group of animators to come together and tell this story. So I started watching a couple of those last night. Uh, those are always fun. I kind of like watching fan fiction stuff. I, I you know, I enjoy it. it, it it's. It, it makes me feel good, you know, like, I, I, I'm just like, look at you guys fucking making the story your own, uh, and taking some of the hot garbage stories and kind of, uh, I don't know, trying to, trying to make them better, good for you, you guys are fucking doing it, you guys are, you guys are killing it out there, keep doing it, you know, so I said, I, I watched a couple of those this morning, they were entertaining, they were fun, uh, you know, so, uh, I'm in a fairly good mood, I think. Uh, I, I think I've been generally in a good mood this week. Uh, I, 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 I don't feel like I've been exercising as much as I would would have liked to this week, but, you know, I, I have been getting quite a bit of stuff done, um, and I do have a few uh, extra projects that, uh, that, that have arrived onto my plate. Uh, one of them being Pittsburgh Fringe, uh, and I'm going to be doing a storytelling show for that similar probably similar to the zoom um so I'm, I'm and i'm trying to make it a little bit more dynamic than just like me sitting in front of a screen and telling you guys a couple of road stories uh so i'm trying to involve like some images or something you know just to kind of uh just to kind of get it going there but um yeah grab your tickets come hang out with me in that zoom show this evening uh, help me, help me kink it out. It'll be kind of be like a team effort. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So I, d- let's, uh, let's get into, let's get into the storytelling Saturday situation that we're in, that we're, that we're going down. Uh, and, uh, I've told the story a few times on stage. There's a couple different times that I feel like I've really kind of nailed it, but I've never kind of just done like a stream of consciousness version of the story. Uh, and, uh, this is a story about how I got attacked by a rooster. That's right. I was attacked aggressively by a rooster. Uh, so, (laughs) uh, so this is from 2018. Uh, my now ex-wife, we were, uh, you know, engaged at the time. She was my fiance at the time. We went on a cross-country tour together, which I, by the way, I do recommend you guys do that if you get the opportunity to, is, is to like, if, if you get a few months, and we, I mean, we planned out four months, uh, toured for four months, I set up a whole shit ton of shows, um, and we went across the country, uh, and, uh, you know, saw a lot, I mean, we saw a shit ton of stuff, uh, it was great. And, you know, so I recommend it because it just gives you a little bit more of an accurate view of what's going on uh, in the country and, and sort of like how, you know, how the other half lives, I guess, would be the, the, the phrase. Uh, but, um, yeah, we went across the country and towards the end of it, so we left in May. We came back in the in, in early September. So towards the end of it, I think around August, we decided that, um, you know, it would be nice if we kind of had uh, a little bit more of like a private space for the time that we had. So, so we, we, we found a, you know, a couple days in the calendar where we knew that we had um, some time off. So we were heading into Des Moines. We had a late show in Des Moines, which meant that we had a pretty long early day. So we got an Airbnb and then we had a day off before that. So I think the show was on Wednesday. We came in on a Tuesday or something. And uh, so, you know, so we showed up a day early And we got this Airbnb, we splurged, we spent that 25 bucks, you know, splurged. And uh, we got this Airbnb and uh, my fiance was like, hey, this place sounds pretty darn cool. It's a little outside Des Moines. 
um, in this quiet, like, farming area. And check this out. They have these two giant iron roosters in front of their house to kind of um, separate themselves from, you know, uh, the rest of the farmland, essentially. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I was like, that's that's a neat sculpture of, of some roosters. It's very cool. So uh, we drive up, you know, just just as it was promised. It's fucking 30 minutes outside Des Moines by some farms. And boom, there were these iron roosters. And I was like, that's pretty rad. I've never seen, you know, sculptures like this before. We pull in, we get out. And, uh, and immediately, like, our, my car was just surrounded by chickens. I was like, well, that's fucking weird. And I got out and I was just like, all right, dealt with chickens before. Everybody scooch, everybody get out of the way. Uh, and this little kid comes out, eh, 13, 14 tops. Um, and we, and we were like, hey, are we at the right place? And he was like, yep, I'm here to welcome you guys. You know, like my mom runs the Airbnb. She's out right now. She's not here. I was like, ah. All right, that's fine. So, uh, go in, you know, we're, we're getting our stuff. And he was like, hey, do you need help with your bags? And I was like, nah, I think we got it, man. I think we should be all right. What's up with these chickens? And he goes, oh, they just think you have food. They're kind of dumb. They'll, they'll get away. And then I look over to the side, and I just see this big black rooster, like, pacing, like, heavily. You know, like, he's just pacing like I owe him money right like it like this rooster is just fucking pissed and I was just like hey what's up with that guy and he goes oh that's the rooster he's kind of an asshole and I was like word all right dude uh <laughs> and he's like yeah just don't just don't go near him and and you know like he'll he'll be fine he he's kind of a dick he does that all the time he could tax me whenever I go to grab eggs I was like, he attacks you? And he, he was like, yeah, we don't like each other, but I got to get eggs. And I was like, all right. So we grab our stuff. We go inside. The kid gives us like a tour, you know, like little kids do. It's just he's fucking giving us a big, he's, he's excited. He's excited that we're, that we're here, you know. So uh, he gives us a tour and then we're like, all right, buddy, we're trying, we're, we're going to, we're going to chill out. You know, we're going to have a, like a night in. And, uh, and fucking watch some Netflix and uh, chill out. So we did that. Next day we wake up. Same thing. We kind of start hanging out with this, uh, with this young kid. This young buck. Right? Finds out I'm a comedian. He's like, let me show you all the things that I find fun. I was like, all right. <laughs> sure. That's fine. <laughs> And he starts pulling up these YouTube videos. And one of the YouTube videos is literally like a dude for 14 minutes making funny faces and funny noises. And I've never seen anybody laugh this hard before in my entire life. Like this kid is having like a fucking seizure. And... All this guy, like, he's just literally, like, he's just making a bunch of goofy faces, uh, and, and, like, like, sound effects. That's it. And I'm watching, I watched the entire fucking 15-minute video. I gotta be honest with you guys. Like, I got a little upset. <laughs> got a little mad. You know? Because I was like, you know how fucking hard I work on crafting jokes and making them perfect and thinking about things like word economy and is this the right phrasing? Is this the right city to use in this context? Is that funny? Is Dothan, Alabama funnier than Frankfurt, Kentucky? Which one is it? And I think about that shit and all this guy did is kind of blow a raspberry into a camera and this kid almost peed himself. Got irrationally upset about that. So I kind of looked at the kid and I was like, all right, I've had enough of these videos. Because <laughs> to be honest, I had enough of the video. 
you know, and the kid was like, do you want to show me some of your favorite comedians? And I was like, ooh, I don't know if I should show you some Bill Hicks or Carlin or fucking Janine Garofalo or any of that shit, right? Like, I think that's a bad idea. (laughs) I'd have to get your mom's permission to see if I'm allowed to show you any of these people. I mean, I discovered Bill Hicks when I was 14. Uh, But, you know, I didn't have somebody show me Bill Hicks when I was 14. I just, I kind of happenstanced on Bill Hicks when I was 14. And, uh, And that's how I found him, right? Same thing with Carlin Pryor and and all the comics that I listen to now, I, 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 I kind of listen to them because I found them on my own, not because somebody, like, showed them to me. Uh, so I was like, I don't know if I should take that responsibility. That doesn't feel right. Uh, so I was like, maybe a later time, buddy. And, you know, my fiance was like, hey, uh, let's, like, start moving along here. We got to make lunch and we got to start getting ready. So we made some lunch. And we're eating. And then we got uh, we got to that point where it was like, all right, we want to take like a nice, nice relaxing bath. Because we had jacuzzi jets in this Airbnb bathroom. And we were like, let's utilize this. Uh, you know, we'll like relax. It'll be nice. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll take like a shower and get ready for the show tonight. Um, you know, because we had to be there a little early, so we and we're thirty minutes out. We don't want to like take too long. So like, all right. So when you're on a cross country tour, uh, uh, or you're on the road for a very long time, you live out of your car. I, I live out of my car uh, for 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 the majority of the year. Quite quite frankly, the, um, you know that's one of the things during this quarantine is like I kind of miss living out of my car right now. Uh, which is kind of weird to say. Like, at first, I was just like, this is great. I don't have to worry about suitcases or anything like that. And now I'm just like, oh, my God, I want to be back in a suitcase so bad. I just want to live out of a suitcase. Oh, what am I going to start? <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it's not, it's not that, like, you know, that bad. But it is one of those things, like, I do miss it. Uh, I do miss... I do miss touring, and uh, but it's okay. You know, we're we're gonna get back to it. Anyway, so I had most of my clothes in my suitcase, so you know, and I would just kind of go out to my car and grab what I needed for the day, and then go back in. That's what I was gonna do. So I walk out to my car, and I see that fucking rooster, right? And I look at him, and I'm like, "Hey, look, just trying to get some clothes, man. All right." Not trying to get anywhere near your chickens. I don't care about any of those eggs. Just me trying to get some fucking clothes. Because you know how roosters uh, understand English. Uh, they're a proficient, uh, proficient linguist birds. You guys know? Just remember? <laughs> they're real good at real good at languages. And like so, so then the rooster he starts pacing, and I was just like, all right, man, I just got. I'm just gonna go get my thing and fucking move on, right? So I go to my car, I open my trunk, I open my suitcase, and then all of a sudden I just hear, <laughs> and, I, and I turn around and this rooster stops, and he's like charged towards me, and I was like, what the fuck? And this rooster was like, no, what the what the fuck to you? Okay, what are you, what are you doing? No, you're being weird. Okay, you're no, you're being weird. I'm not doing anything. You're being weird. So it's just like, hey man, I'm just trying to get these clothes. You know, I put my hands up and I was like, look, I got nothing. No weapons. You know, no claws. Just trying to get some clothes out of my car. Go back inside and have a nice time. You know, I'm not trying to fuck around here. So I turn back around. And I go for, you know, grabbing a a nice fresh shirt or something. And then I hear it again. I just hear, and I turn around and this rooster's right at my feet about to peck my fucking feet, and I was like, I, and I, I, like, air kicked him, but I missed, but I, like, also wasn't really intending on trying to kick this bird, I just wanted to scare it away, and he kind of, like, hopped backwards, and then he, like, came at me again, and I was like, I no, <laughs> like, I started freaking out, and then I was trying to kick him, but, it, you know, like, I'm panicked, 
and I missed, and now I realized I missed, but this bird now thinks I have hostile intentions, but the bird had hostile intentions towards me at first. So I just panicked. I didn't know what to do. This bird's coming at me, and I was like, it's coming for my eyes, and I just fucking bolted. I just ran. I, I gunned it back into the house. There's like a tiny little fence. I hopped that fence, and I, I bust into the kitchen, right? My fiance's talking to his little kid, and they both just stare at me. Like, I'm covered in sweat. My clothes are not in my hand. I'm very clearly out of breath. My fiance's like, what the fuck just happened? And I was like, it came for my eyes. It wants my eyes. It knows. It knows that I'm scared of it, and it wants my eyes. She's like, what are you, what? Stop. Slow down. What the fuck is happening? And I was like, the fucking rooster, the rooster attacked me. It came at me. It tried to, it tried, it was, it, it, it wanted my eyes. She's like, I don't think the bird wants your eyes. What the fuck happened? And I told her what happened. And she's like, that's it. That's all. It's a bird. Like you could just kick it in the face with your boots. Like you have boots. You can just kick it in the face. Kick the f- bird in the face. And I was like, I don't know if getting violent towards this animal is is the right thing to do right I'm I'm a pacifist I don't believe in the violence I felt I reacted out of a need to protect myself but I don't believe in physical physically harming this bird I think this bird doesn't understand if I could take a moment to communicate with it to show it that I'm not and she's like it's a fucking bird and I was like all right but I don't want to go because now it knows that I'm scared of it And I think it can sense my fear and it's 100% going to go for my eyes. Very concerned about the fact that it's going to go for my eyes. Because I've seen, I know birds, I know how they, I know how they operate. You know, it's like that's, that's their target range is they kind of get your attention to turn around and then kapow, they're, you know, they got one of your eyeballs in their, in their little claws. That's how they, that's how they work. That's, that's, I've seen the movie Birds. That movie's prophetic. Movie is fucking prophetic. If we turn... If we turn our backs on birds, they're going to retake the planet. They're tiny dinosaurs, and they want the planet back. That's that's what they want. They want the planet back. They know. They fucking know. They were like, we used to be huge. We used to be huge. And we, used to, we used to fucking own this thing. And now look at these hairless primates. They're fucking things up. They got us laying eggs for them. This bullshit. Right? I fuck. I knew. I know that's what it is. So now, my fiance was like, what are you, what are you going to do? You got to go and get your clothes. Like, you don't have clean clothes in here. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'll just wear what I have. I'll just wear what I have. I'll change at the venue. I don't fucking, I don't care. I'll change at the venue, you know? And she's like, no, you're not going to change it. I'll go out there. And I'll get your clothes for you. And I was just like, yeah, but you're wearing shorts. What if it comes and pecks your feet? She's like, I'll wear my boots. I was like, what if it's going to come for your eyes? She was like, I'll take a fucking broom. Right? So she takes a broom and she goes out there. And I go on the back patio. And I kind of like peek around to see what's going on. And the rooster, exact same thing. It, it like it fucking cir- like circles her and then comes in from back. She turns around and she literally just sweeps the fucking bird away. And the rooster's like, bro, I get it. I get it. Watching you though, but I get it. She grabs my clothes. We come back in. I'm still panicking. So I start looking up stuff about roosters. Cause I'm just like, is this is this like a normal thing for fucking roosters to do? Is this what they do? And it turns out, you guys, like I I looked up a bunch of facts about roosters. Turns out, uh, roosters, fucking huge assholes. They're just like the assholes of the bird community. That's all they are. Like, they're constantly aggressive. They're always looking for a fight. Like, they have one purpose, and that's fertilizing the eggs. That's it. That's their whole purpose. Like, they don't have anything else to do. So they're constantly just, like, 
aggressive and looking for a fight. They're just like, boy, you, you want to do this? Let's make it happen right now. I will destroy your eyes. Let's make this happen. They're just like, the Roosters are basically everybody that peaked in high school. Like, they, they're everybody that peaked in high school, like, at one point, they, like, everybody was like, you're the fucking man, dude. You're it. Like, you're the best thing. And then they just never graduated from that or developed, like, a personality or anything. So then they just grow up doing the same shit that they did in high school. While everybody else is like, no, we have, like, th- philosophy and family and belief systems. And they're like, no, we're going to fight right now. I'm coming for your eyes. And it's just like, that's... All right, man, just fucking relax. I got no weapons. Look at this. I got... No, I'm not... This is not an aggressive posture that I'm taking. They're just like big assholes. Here's the thing. You don't even need a rooster to make eggs. Chickens just lay eggs. They just lay eggs. Like, the rooster is like the most pointless fucking bird on the planet. Seriously, if we figured out how to clone chickens, we would never need roosters. Like, they're that close to just being completely obsolete as an animal. So they're just pissed all the time. Just like, I need a purpose! What they need is, like, to learn... They need, like, species retraining. Like, they need to find a new purpose for their existence. You know... Maybe they can learn something from like uh, like a duck. You know, we get we get some roosters involved with some ducks, and the ducks are just like, nah, dude, you can just like swim. You know, you can just fucking you can just like swim in a lake for a little while. Like you don't have to you don't have to fight anybody. You know, like you could just uh, if you just like hang out, like you could just look at this. There's like fish around and stuff. Like it's pretty cool. It's pretty relaxing. No, you don't have to fight anybody. That's the that's the point. It's just like there's like a lake. Yeah, sometimes people are gonna shoot you. You know, it's just a thing that happens. Like that's uh, an unfortunate part of it. But but like for the most part, though, a lot of us are just like fucking swimming. Uh, you know, sometimes we look at the swans. I don't know, and, and we're just like your neck's too fucking long. What are you doing with your your? You got into your, your. It's just too much neck. For like for a bird, it's just too much neck. Yeah, I've heard about flamingos. They're crazy. They're you know, I heard about. I can't believe they fly. Do you know they fly? That's crazy. And it, you know, like re and then like the fucking chicken, uh, the the rooster might chill out. But that's the crazy part about the, uh, about roosters too is they have a fucking they have like a talon. Like when they get into like adolescence, when they're like the most aggressive, they get these uh, they get these hooky talons. And they jump. They can't really fly very well, but they jump and they like use their wings as like a guide or whatever. And then they they use like the talons to claw at people's faces. So they do come after your eyes. They do come after your eyes. People were like, "Oh, Chris, you're just uh, you're just being paranoid." You know, old paranoid Grish over here worrying about these fucking birds. But, ah, uh, it's facts right there. I looked up how to, uh, like, pacify a rooster as well. Like, I went deep into this thing. I spent, like, a good two hours just fucking looking up rooster facts. Uh, and my fiance said, can, can you just get into the jacuzzi and fucking, like, relax? And I was like, not, not until... Not until I figure out how to combat this bird with love. It's just like, it's not going to happen. It's a bird. It doesn't care. Like you said, it wants your eyes. Right? It's like, so I looked at, and one of the ways that you can pacify a chicken, or a rooster, sorry, a rooster, you can pacify a chicken by, like, just uh, throwing seed at it. And it's just like, you're my best friend now. But, like, roosters, what you have to do is um, you got to, like, go to the coop where the where the rooster is with some like a seed or something in your in your hand um and then you and then the rooster will see you and it'll come at you and like posture at you and you like sink down to its level 
you look away from the bird, you look away from the bird, and then you just put your hand out with the seed, and then you let the rooster eat from your hand. And, uh, and at first it's gonna peck your hand to show that it's dominance, but if you don't waver, if you don't like pull your hand back or something because it pecked at you, then it's like, all right, all right. But that can take like fucking weeks. And I was like, I'm not, that's fucking, that's crazy. That's just like inviting this rooster to just attack you at, at any point. That's fucking nuts. Why would you do that? That's crazy. So I did, I did get into this jacuzzi thing and, uh, and take a bath and relax and, you know, all that. We got ready for the show and we left around like, um, 8, 8.30, something like that. 10 p.m. show. The sun had set, uh, which was the rooster's weakness. So everybody knows. Everybody knows that uh, the roosters, they're weakest at the dark. They, 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 get their, they get their strength from the dawn. They get their strength from the dawn. So um, we got into a car, went and did the show. Uh you know, came back, it was like one when we came back, late show, and I'm laying in bed, we're getting ready for bed, right, you know, and I'm laying in bed, I'm snuggling up, and, uh, and then I had this thought, and, and the thought was, holy shit, I'm going to have to deal with that rooster tomorrow. What are we going to do? And, and, you know, by the time we leave, it might be noon, which that's when the rooster is at its most powerful. So I turned to my fiance and I was like, what are we, I, we got we to gotta deal with the, that rooster tomorrow. It's very scary. It's, what, what are we going to do? And she's like, oh, my God. It's a bird. We'll be fine. We'll take the broom out. I was like, we got to make a plan. And she's like, fine, make a plan. But I'm going to bed. So I formulated a plan. And the next day I communicated my plan to my fiance. And I said, look, here's the deal. I'll take half the stuff. You take the other half the stuff. I got the two food bags. I got my laptop bag. I got your laptop bag. uh, And uh, you got your backpack, your guitar, and your shoulder bag. And then, uh, and that's all of our stuff. I'm gonna unlock the car from inside the house. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick the the patio door open, and we're gonna gun it. We're gonna gun it, and but we're not. Don't even worry about organizing it. We're gonna throw our stuff into the back of the car, uh, and then we're gonna get in, and we're gonna peel the fuck out before this rooster even knows that we're here. And, and I was like, Do you understand the plan? Do you get? what the plan is. She's like, yeah, I got the fucking plan. I was like, great. Excellent. Excellent. Glad we're on the same page. And I get ready. I was like, you ready? Let's do this. Uh, And I run and I jump kick the patio door, uh, which was locked, so it didn't open. So I had to set the bags down, open up, unlock the patio door, open it, pick the bags up, and then I fucking gunned it. I ran for the car as fast as I fucking could, and I opened the door, I threw all the bags in there, throw my stuff in there, I, I, you know, slide over the trunk, and I jump into the driver's seat of the car, and I turn to the passenger side, and there's nobody there, and my fiance is just sauntering towards the car, and I was like, this is how people die in horror movies, there is a killer bird on the loose. And you are, you are taking this very nonchalantly right now. And then she comes in and she starts shifting things in the back. And she's like, well, you can't just drive away with all this shit unorganized like this. And I was like, the bird is going to kill you. And she's like, well, just keep a lookout for the bird and let me know when it comes. I was like, what is, the, what the fuck is happening right now? And she was like, look, I brought the broom. You want to hold the broom and be my big man protector, huh? Hi, you want to be the big protector? Save me from this scary bird. 
He was like, I, I don't need you to patronize me. But yes, give me the broom. Right? Because I'm like, I'm not going to let this fucking bird attack somebody that I love. Fuck that noise. I don't care how scared. I'll, I'll swat. I'll, I'll have, I'll, I'll go after this fucking bird. I'll take this bird out. So now I'm outside holding this broom, looking at this bird. I was like, I fucking see you, rooster. And the rooster sees me. And I was like, oh, I see you. And I showed it the broom. And then it moved from one side of the car. It started to rotate. So I started to rotate with it. And I was like, oh, I'm not losing you, you fucking bird. And I had this realization, right? Is like, if this bird attacks my fiance, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to probably kill this bird. Like, I, I would have to like beat it with a broom, and I might have to murder a fucking bird with a broom, and I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for that. Like, what am I going to do if, if, if I kill a bird with a broom? How am I going to live with myself? You know, I got to go talk to the chickens. I got to walk over to the coop. Got to be like, look, he came, he came at, he came at my lady. I got to, you know, I don't know how it is in the, in the, in the chicken rooster community, but, you know, chivalry is not completely dead in the human world. So, you know, I had to lay my life on the line, put my life at risk. You know, I'm sorry if this, if this rooster was your protector, I am sorry, but, uh, you know, let's be honest, kind of a dick though, right? Kind of a little bit of a dick, you know? I bet he, did he ever, did he ever ask you how your day went? I bet he didn't, you know? I bet he didn't, I bet he didn't listen. I bet he wasn't a good listener. I can tell you he's not a good listener because uh, because I, I communicated with him uh, very clearly about my intentions of peace uh, and my intentions of just getting close and he still attacked me, you know? Just seemed... Uh, you know, a lot of issues. How was his father? Did he have a lot? Did he have a bad relationship with his dad? Was was that the situation? Look, it had to be done. I'm sorry. And I'm like, how am I, I going to fucking justify that with myself? That I had to murder the shit out of a bird. So. Um, She got all the stuff in, and then she moved to the trunk, and she was like, hey, you're kind of freaking me out a little bit with what you're doing. Just just set the broom down and go sit in the car. I'll be fine. And I was like, I don't... She's like, I'll be fine. So I set the broom right next to her, and I was like, it's right here if you need it. Got into the car, and I sat there, and I'm panicking, right? I'm like covered in sweat. And then she gets in the car and I immediately fucking back out and I haul ass out of there. And she looks at me and she's like, dude, are we going to talk about what the fuck just happened to you? I was like, I don't, I don't know. This is being protective. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to, she was like, no, it's just, it's a bird. And you were like really fucking freaked out by this bird. And I was like, yeah, but it attacked me though. Unprovoked, unprovoked, it attacked me. And she's she kind of got mad about it. Uh, and we got into a bit of a fight. And I had to think about it, right? I had to, like, think about why I did have this reaction that I did. And I think I kind of came to some kind of a conclusion about this. Is I think... I talked about this before, but I think I come from flight people. I don't come from, like, a group of people that is ready for the fight. Like, I think in my past, in my ancestral past, in the hunter-gatherer days, uh, you know, like, my ancestor was the person that saw, like, a giant fucking bird, you know, like, the rooster's ancestor, and it came at him, and there were a couple people that were like, ah, and then my ancestor was just like, nah, fuck this noise, we gotta go! You know, and a couple of the, a couple of the, our people didn't make it. 
they didn't get to they didn't get to to, to, to have a lineage you know, spread that aggressive gene I'm not uh, I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna that's gonna you know fight through it it's just not this is not me uh, it, you know I don't want to kill a bird man that's I'm not gonna be the guy on the you know fucking going out there killing zombies in the apocalypse that's not that's not my role like I'm not gonna be that fucking guy I'm not the hunter part of the hunter gatherer, right? I don't even. I'm like. I'm not even really the gatherer part of the hunter. I'm like the cook. That's who. That's. I'm like. I read a book about how to turn human flesh into a nice souffle. That's that's who I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like. Yeah, you can't just eat raw flesh. You can't. Ju- you gotta. You gotta marinate it. You gotta marinate it. That's going to be me, you know? Like, when we get down to the fucking eat the rich times, you, you, were you just going to eat it? Like, there's no fucking way. Do you know how many uh, people are fucking pampered? By eating this, by eating steak the right fucking way? Are you going to tell me that you're not going to try to cook humans when it comes down to that? You're going to need somebody that knows how to do it. You, that's going to be me. I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be the guy. That's going to be my purpose in the apocalypse is not going out there and fucking, you know, hunting people down or, or fu- gathering the berries. I'm the guy. I'm the guy that comes afterwards, where they're like, "We've gathered, we've gathered the meats, we've gathered the berries. What would you like to do with this?" That's that's me. <laughs> I'm that guy, man. <laughs> that's my role in society. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna be the. I like I'm not I, I'm not a good fighter. It's just that's just not who I am. You know my my role in society is going to be a lot more passive. I'll see. I'll run tutorials in the apocalypse. You know I'll just be like, here's how you want to make a stew. Here's how you make that Bezos stew. <laughs> oh shit. But it was it was a it was a pretty horrifying experience, you guys. Pretty horrifying experience. I don't like noosers. I don't like birds. I'm not a big fan of birds either. Just in case, I might have mentioned that before. I don't know if I did or not, but I I genuinely don't like birds. Uh, I find them to be uh, horrific, horrific creatures. Uh, you know, here here's my deal with nature too, though. Is like. We went on a camping trip, and I didn't handle that very well either. And I, you know, part of it was just like we we went in totally unprepared for it. Like we didn't have enough firewood. We weren't, you know, like we didn't make enough food. We just kind of went, and then like the sun kept setting. And I kept hearing shit, and I like had the worst fucking night of sleep in my life. It was awful. I hated it. I hated every moment of it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a super. First of all, I'm not a super outdoorsy guy. I just got I just got way too many anxieties to like to like be an outdoorsy person. And uh, I also don't think like you know I just kind of want to leave nature alone. You know I look at these people that are like I'm gonna go climb a mountain to conquer it or whatever. And I'm just like no, but just like I don't. You don't have to though. You can just kind of like look at it. I'd be like, that's a really beautiful mountain. And I appreciate I appreciate it for being a mountain. You know? I could just like look at like like I used to like climbing trees. I probably still do. I don't climb trees very often. Partly because of this viewpoint that I have where I'm like, I don't know if the tree wants me to fucking climb it. You know, I just look at a tree and I'm like, good job being a tree. You know, you're killing it. You're doing a great job. You got the shade and the leaves and the flowers and some fruits. That's fucking great. You're being a good tree. You know, you're nailing it. You're nailing being a tree right now. Since I like to look at it from a distance, I like to appreciate it. You know, I'll water it every once in a while, but I don't need to go like conquer it or anything. I don't need to like prove that I can survive in nature. I don't fuck. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I believe in ethical use of technology. <laughs> 
moving forward, we're stewards to nature. We can use our technology to help nature, to make it better, instead of uh, the stupid shit we're doing now with our technology, using it for spying on each other and uh, uh, killing each other. And just, I think, uh, just far too much masturbation with our technology. Far too many, far too many pieces of technology are just like, can I fuck it? Like, it's just, uh, it's great. I just like to appreciate nature from a distance. You know, that's what I like to do. I'm not saying that if you want to go, you know, mountain climb or hike in the woods or try to test your might, you know, against a bear or whatever, that that's the wrong thing to do. It's just not for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. That's just, uh, that's not in my DNA. That's not in my DNA. That's I'm 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 the I'm the thinky guy. I'm the brainy guy. I'm the you know I'll I'll problem solve, but I'm not uh, I'm not front lines, you know. I'm not uh, I'm not skin a bear kind of guy. I'm not that guy. I don't think I'm ever, I don't think I'm I'm gonna be that guy. You know what I mean? Like that's just not that's not the type of. I'm not trying to be that human, you know. I also don't think that's where humans need to go. We don't need to go into that survivalist realm of things. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that want to go back to that survivalist realm of things to be like, see, when technology fails, and it will. It's like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know if it will. I think that's a choice that we can make is to, like, make technology optimal, make it ethical, make it pragmatic and logical, and and, and use it, you know, to, for, for, like, betterment and improvement we don't need to... I, I, I genuinely think, like, human evolution is going to come in, on an intellectual level uh, than it is on a... Uh, I don't know. The, it's, I think it's going to come on an intellectual level than, than on, a, on a fucking physical level. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think human evolution is... Uh, I think we've tried, like, I think we have, like, drugs and shit that we've taken and invented and stuff, where I think we've tried uh, to, to, to take human evolution to, like, a physical thing, you know, by, like, jacking up our bodies to the umpteenth degree or whatever, and I, I don't think that's... That's like where our next stage of evolution is. I think our next stage of evolution is um, on 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 an intellectual front, on expanding our brain power, on uh, you know developing a new level of consciousness. I think that's where our uh, I think it's going. That's why that's why I'm 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 gonna be a cook in the apocalypse. <laughs> But that's your that's that's the tale with a little bit of weird philosophy at the at the very at the very end there. Uh, it is it is an idea that I, I, I want to explore. I just don't even know where to start researching from it. I think it's just like a personal belief that I have, um, you know, because I do think that we're all intelligence intelligent animals. Like we're all very intelligent creatures. It's just a matter of accessing that intelligence. It's how how, how engaged with that intelligence do you really want to be, right? That's that's sort of the. Uh, that's sort of that's sort of the belief that I have. I think uh, I think we're all intelligent creatures. I think we all have a purpose to serve, um, you know, uh, and we're all intelligent in different ways. You know, like I like I said, I'm not I'm not very physically inclined. Like I don't know how to fix. I'm not I'm not like a physical tool person. I'm I'm very much like a brainy thinky kind of person. Um, but you know, I can like fix basic shit. But, like, I'm not super good at, like, I don't know, like, making a fucking table. Like, that's not my thing. I don't know how to do that, but somebody else does. Like, I don't know how to mow a lawn or fix a, a, a space heater or, or, or a water heater, right? Like, I don't know how to do that. Dude, I have a problem with that fitted sheet that goes over the mattress. Like, I can never get that. I, like, need four people to help me out, you know? I'm like, everybody, we got to coordinate how to put this fitted sheet on the thing like that's I, I have a problem with that 
But I think I'm intelligent in other ways. You know? I think I, I, I problem solve in other ways. It's just we all, you know, need to access what our, what our gifts are. We're all like, we're all like X-Men, but for like real simple shit. <laughs> it's like, hey, I need your, I need your chair building skills. Yeah, I need your, I need your house painting skills. I need your, I need your fucking door fixing skills. I need your economic fixing skills. You know, I need your philosophy fixing skills. Like we're all fucking mutants in our own special fucking way, which I guess is the point of mutants. Anyway, before I go down into this strange rabbit hole that I don't really have totally figured out, it's just been a thought that's swirling around my head. Uh, Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Once again, there might be tickets still available by the time this video ends to get on that Zoom show. uh, To get on that Zoom show. It's a test show. We're going to figure out when the real deal is, when the real thing is. Um... I'm also going to be doing uh, the Pittsburgh Fringe this year. Uh, the, vir- the Pittsburgh Fringe has gone virtual. It's gone virtual. Um, so uh, May 2nd at 9.30 p.m. is when I'll be doing, uh, similar to this, a little bit of storytelling, but it'll be a little bit more dynamic and engaged. Uh, I'll probably have some photos and things of that sort. Uh, and the stories will be a little tighter, a little bit more... Uh, precise than just sort of this loose stream of consciousness, ranty, whatever that I, whatever that this, this, this kind of thing ends up being, which I'm not saying that this is bad or good or what what have you. It's just different. It's just different. Uh, and that's okay. It's allowed to be different. Right. Uh, I think that's sort of the point. Uh, so yeah, we got that, uh, as usual, if you enjoy this stuff, if you enjoy the content that I'm throwing out there, uh, please share it. Hit that like button. Make sure that uh, people get to see it because sometimes this stuff isn't really shown to a whole lot of people. Um, and if you have the ability to, if you have the means to, uh, you know, consider donating. Consider becoming a sustaining member. Um, I did uh, have to add an additional expense with that Zoom thing. Uh, because in order for me to like do a, a, a longer show and uh, have you know a decent decent amount of audience, um, I had to purchase the uh, pro plan or whatever, which is like fifteen bucks a month or something along those lines. And uh, and you know the plan is to kind of continue doing them uh, as many times as I can, as 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 much interest as there is for those Zoom shows, uh, and each one will kind of be a little bit different than, than the other one, um, but I'll get into that a little later, I'll, once I kind of have tonight's show figured out, and by tonight, that's Saturday, April 25th, once I kind of have that figured out, I will, I'll have a better understanding of, uh, of how I'm actually going to implement these shows. Uh, but till then, uh, go to my website. That's where you'll find all of the information. Um, that's where you'll find, uh, all my ticket links for these upcoming shows. All my past videos are there. All my albums are there, which are available as pay what you want on the Bandcamp page. Uh, and you can make a donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate if you can it's not a it's not a uh, necessity um, to do that but if you can that'd be nice I think that's it that's the end it's the end for today that's the end for today it's not like the end forever Uh, (laughs) I'll be going live tomorrow as well um, I think I have some uh, some fun, interesting things that that uh, uh, plan for that. Um, depending on what happens, I might be going live a little late tomorrow. Um, you know, I've been going live around noon. Around noon, it might be around one or two tomorrow, uh, depending on uh, how the show goes tonight and how much energy I have um, after the show, essentially. 
how much energy I have after the show. I might do the show, shut everything down, tweak up a few things, and then just have to call it a night. Um, so, yeah. So, so keep keep a keep a, a lookout. Um, you know, for that. That'll be. I'll I'll send out the invites and all that stuff for the Facebook event for that. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that's the whole video, you guys. You guys made it all the way to the end. And I appreciate you. I, uh, I, I, I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the people that have donated. Thank you for the people that have become sustaining members. Uh, thank you for the people that continue to watch these videos. And thank you for the people that keep commenting and sharing all this stuff. I love you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see some of you guys tonight. If not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, see you on the road. Bye.